the, one of my favorite lines in it, um, and it's so great, and it's like, oh, where did it go? It's man is but an animal suspended in webs of significance that he himself has spun. And it's so fucking That's the human true. condition. Let's it let, is. Let yeah. that sink in for a fucking It yeah. is. Can you repeat that for the people, please? Let that sink man in. Man is but an animal suspended in webs of significance that he himself has spun. It's so fucking true because in that book, it's a chapter about comparing humans to animals and the animalistic natures that we all have. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, that the only reason why everything matters to us is because we suspend it in this web of importance because mm -hmm. that's what it means to be alive. Hey, what's up, guys? You're back with another episode of Before the Money. I'm super excited for this one. We're sitting here with a legend in the flesh, oh. Alistair King, animator, <laughs> comedian, <laughs> lots of lots of other things. Stylish We're gonna find out. In that Ooh, jacket, too. God, Very damn. fucking stylish. You're gonna make me blush, guys. <laughs> Bro, we just finished you gassing you up for like ten minutes about that jacket. For a little bit of a visual, it is a Mickey Mouse biker jacket. Now, before I tell you how it actually looks, just imagine what that looks like in your own head for yes. a second. It's fucking dope. Full black, full leather. What did you say? Cross stitched inside. Inside, and man. It it's heavy. It feels good. And one of fifteen. Did yeah, you say? Yeah, they don't make them anymore. No, yeah, Ob fuck, like yeah. this. We picked this up from Sydney, like in the Glebe markets. Yeah. And I've, I was fucking like, is that that jacket? Like, I have to have <laughs> that jacket. Yeah. Once they saw it on you, they're like, no, we can't make them anymore. He's fucking nailed it. <laughs> He's taking the cake. Thank you. No thank topping you. that. Awesome. So we want to kick off this episode with something a little bit different. We want to launch with a segment. Now, oh. we were thinking about launching with a segment called, what was it called again? It's just pretty much over underrated. We're going to give you a bunch of topics, okay. keywords, and you just let us know over or underrated. Yeah. Over or underrated. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or one, fairly I... rated. You can yeah, go okay, in the go middle. The, yeah, I can go if the you're a pussy, you can sit on the fence. Well, I don't like to sit on the fence. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lead this off. The first uh, topic that we have is mm -hmm. Angus King, over or underrated? Definitely underrated. Yeah, so yeah. It, like it, like. Well, I, it's not just because he's like my brother, but <laughs> it, like it's just a, like actually like a genuine person. Yeah, like yeah. if you meet Angus, like he'll give you like his best all the time. Like it's mm -hmm. never just like a whatever man like blah blah, mm -hmm. blah not interested it's always interested so mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate that in someone 100%. i I'll, I'll quickly just jump in there and say uh we went to a party with with the whole crowd yep and there was a lot of people that i didn't know and i'm like get a bit anxious around new people and yep. i just like found myself gravitating towards angus because he's just like such a warm presence and it really really helped me in that party just having like a grounded place to start mm. in yeah. it's funny you say that because he is like I'm not an astro like astrological person. Mm -hmm. My mum is, like, like our family is, but Angus is a Taurus, and he's an Earth mm -hmm. sign. So yeah. they're very grounded people. Oh, Super grounded. So very it makes stubborn though. Very stubborn. So yeah. it makes a lot of sense that he, because he is, he's just a very grounded person. Mm. He is a grounded person. Like very he's very, person, he's very yeah. solid on what he knows, and mm -hmm. you know, if you give him the time of day, he'll give you the time. Yeah, of day. he reciprocates yeah. it. Yeah. All right, number two, overrated or un underrated pleasures? The clothing brand. <laughs> Underrated. Yeah. 100%. I have so much. Oh, I'm not surprised I'm even wearing it Bro, today. I definitely thought you would be well, wearing this it. this is a Russell Westbrook collab. Oh, they wow. They did a culture yeah. team. And it's, I love it. Yeah. It's just, it's just as why not. It's one of my favorite shirts. But the, it's pretty dope. the mm -hmm. whole Pleasures collections, they, I love it. The whole brand image, their socials. Well, they, yeah. don't, they don't try too no. hard. I always feel like some brands do like try and force a narrative and you're like... All right, man, like, I'm mm -hmm. not that. I'm not that, but, like, mm -hmm. Pleasures is very much, they know who they are. They're not going to try to be someone else. Like, yeah. it's just that. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely underrated. I, I would agree, man. Uh, one of, like, the my favorite tees is really cool green tie-dyed Pleasures with, like, the fluorescent green across the yes. chest, man. Or, oh, oh, it makes me mad. Jess had a Pleasures shirt. Mm -hmm. um, I have one. It's, you it's know, actually girlfriend, right? Yeah, Jess yeah. is my girlfriend, yep. but... Those who don't know, she's yeah. a DJ, just Jesse. She's a fucking legend. <laughs> fucking legend. So, 
basically she had two shirts um and one of, they did it the whole basically pleasure did a magic city collaboration mm-hmm. do you guys know what magic city is that sounds familiar it rings a bell it's a yeah. strip i'm pretty sure it's it's a, it's a strip club yeah. in alaska in Ooh, the states i think it's in alaska nice and cold wouldn't it yeah but <laughs> apparently apparently it goes off apparently yeah. it goes off but there was one tea um that she had i still have the other one but she sold this one they don't make them anymore mm-hmm. but it was a um Magic City with a big kiss, like lipstick kiss oh, on the front. Yeah. And on the back, it had all the like reviews of the strip club. Oh, that's <laughs> sick. What? That's fucking So dope. it had like five stars, <laughs> lost, <laughs> lost my wedding ring. <laughs> Don't care. I'm going back. <laughs> yeah, and then it was, it was like, worth it. Yeah, there was like, there was, it's like two stars. Um, she wouldn't tell me her name. I'm never, <laughs> I'm never coming back. <laughs> so she, like, there was some fucking funny reviews on it. I was like, as if you would sell That's that such t-shirt. A sick Every shirt. time I wore it, I'm like, weird. have to frame that, surely. Yeah, it's fucking sick. Does I don't she know. At least they get n- quite a bit for it. Like, I don't know. Probably not because <laughs> like people want the shirt, they'll buy it. She probably yeah. sold it because she just wanted to get rid of it, mm. clear some space. She didn't even tell me. I was like, as if you fucking sold it. <laughs> and you're still together. Yes. Fuck. It's a trip. I feel like <laughs> everybody knows Jesse. Like, yeah. Everybody. She is pretty popular yeah. here on the Gold Coast, especially. Like, I remember, like. Before we even met, because she she used to play it elsewhere. If you mm-hmm. guys ever been yeah. elsewhere, yeah, quite. She was the first ever female resident DJ. In like, yeah, wow. Yeah. She had, like pioneering it for women and stuff, yeah. and she still is. But um, when she left elsewhere, she because she wanted to do like things on her own terms. She wanted to start playing in other places and stuff. Obviously, it doesn't really work if you play it elsewhere because you yeah. have to sign like a contract with them to play mm-hmm. there and nowhere else so really so well, you're like exclusive to that club oh yeah, yeah that's yeah. like with most like if resident, you're a resident yeah. it makes she sense, was yeah. a resident so it makes yeah. sense right yeah but yeah no she all over the gold coast she plays so yeah yeah, yeah. i was uh actually with her brother not that long ago at a party. which one uh jake yeah legend yeah, yeah. which him, one mate. which party um so we uh one of my best friends from school is really good friends with him from school what's his name uh ben fowler Oh, no, I don't know. No. no. Oh, it was his birthday and then yeah, we we're all up at Ben's this mm-hmm. fucking dope night. Sick. Yeah, no, we we were just at the Surface Pavilion. Because yeah. Jess played. I haven't ever been to the pavilion. I'm not mm-hmm. a fan of Pav the even. The Surface Pavilion. Yeah. So I, I don't think I've been in there before. No. No. I went to the Burley Pav. Yeah. Like, I'm not a massive fan, but like we'll go there. It's if, a beautiful venue, you know. Great, especially in the afternoon. Great real estate. Yep, great, yeah. Great. <laughs> great, <laughs> great. I mean, if someone gave it to me, I wouldn't complain. No. <laughs> but like we went to the Surface Pav and that Jess was opening for them because Stace Cadet was playing there as well. Mm. Sick. Yeah. So he he played before Jess. And we went there and that's, we went with Jake and Liam, which is Jess's mm-hmm. brothers and um, had a fucking mad time. It was good. Yeah. yeah Cause yeah. he ran into whole, like a whole bunch of footy cause he's obviously big in the footy space. Yeah. yeah. Um, he ran into a bunch of his footy mates and um, it was good. They're all such fucking rascals, but as yeah, soon as they touch, that, as soon as they touch alcohol, yeah, it's like, all t- inhibitions it's all, it's all out like the window. You and like, <laughs> yeah. up and like trying to tackle you. I'm like, dude, we're going to get kicked out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> seriously. Like, yeah. Amazing. So take this away. Rapper. Um, what, were we, what segment were we playing again? Overrated no, or underrated? underrated. Yeah. So we're uh, still on we that. I'm going to ask you the J. Cole album that just dropped. <sighs> <sighs> Fucking underrated. I'm going underrated. Underrated? I think, yeah. He's generous. Well, it's, well <laughs> yeah. it just came out. You can't, yeah. I don't know if you can say it's overrated yet. Oh, no. it's, it's been slapped. But- Everywhere. It is seventy-four. Reckon, like he's yeah. fucking like he's killed it with this one. For yeah, sure. it's I, number one in seventy-four countries. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, people are paying attention. Well, yeah. I, I, that's. I just love everything he brings out. Yeah, like, yeah. It's there's never really, I second that. Yeah, and every <laughs> there's never like a. Oh, maybe it's always at the top. It's level. always yeah. like it's always crisp. It's always like real professional shit. Mm. And he and like when he mm. when he raps about stuff. It's always like proper issues. It's not like the you know the will be stuff. That it tells us clear story as well. Dude, That's why I like it. You can visualize his songs. Yes, yeah. you know uh, it's a story. Mm-hmm. I mean, but he does it differently. It's like like I used to like in a Hobson. Yes, yeah. I used to be a massive Hobson fan, but I can't listen to Hobson constantly because his stuff is like too intense. Yeah, it is. Mm. It's it's story driven, but it's intense. Right? Yeah, it's... J Cole takes that like back road chill vibe but still giving less you the aggressive same. less yep. aggressive it doesn't yeah. it doesn't have to be like fuck you man blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. it's like he does it very very yeah. differently it's like is... he finds like a cool slick way to get through, a rhythm through the, like through a proper, yeah i i don't i that's my opinion anyway so yeah, yeah. he's uh, a goat 
Share with the lot of us. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. in a safe space. Yeah, we're all fucking <laughs> yeah, J. Cole we're all fanatics. Big. Yeah, I've, got, I've got a J. Cole lyric tattooed down my back. Oh, fully. What one? Uh, the Beauty of Struggle from Love Yours. Mm. Yeah, in Japanese characters down my spine. Are you a fan of Japan? Uh, I've always been a big fan of Japanese culture. You've been? It's fascinating. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I've been there. I'm it's, not for, it's, not for it's a while. It's up on my list. I've never been. Same, man. Do yeah. you want to go? Same, I highly, highly, highly it recommend it. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. <laughs> The, the the opportunity in Japan is endless. Like, whatever you want to mm. do, you can do it in Japan. It's crazy. I, like, I believe you. From go-karting, so you've seen the Mario go-kart in the street, <laughs> to, like, <laughs> raccoon cafes and shit. Raccoon like, cafes. Like, they have different animal Jeez. cafes where you literally just go into a cafe, have your coffee, have your, your snacks like you do, and then you're surrounded by monkeys if you're in a monkey cafe. Raccoons. <laughs> There's like, I've seen an echidna cafe. Echidna? Any animal that they can fucking get a hold of, they'll make a cafe out of that shit. That's kind of cool. At least least they're not, you know, killing them. Mm. You know, at least they're making a cafe. (laughs) (laughs) I know in some Asian countries, they they do find, like, there's a lot of things in Asian countries in, like, the Western world look very strange. You know, like, they they eat almost everything that moves. (laughs) And it's like, whoa, man, what the fuck? (laughs) And it's like, I don't know about that. Like, I, I saw that, um, you saw that post. I think it was like last year, that post going around about how they do the dog festival there. Mm. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Is that banned now? Right. No, I, um, it was supposed trying. to be. They were they're trying, trying to. Yeah. yeah. It's not done yet. I uh, definitely don't subscribe to that. No, no. No. And like, it's not the fact that they, like, because what's the difference if you're going to eat one animal, you can eat them all, in my opinion. That is, that, that is. But it's how they treat them before oh yeah, yeah. that's they what I guess it's, but like, it's but like they, that with all animals i but suppose they flay yeah. them alive it, yeah. because they they that like the like trauma stuff really fresh. adds to the, oh, the see, experience I thought it was, of eating it right but the adrenaline and the muscles blah 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 right? yeah but i thought that was a bad thing i thought yeah. when you kill an animal that's you know when they get the bolt in the cow's head yeah if the meat is stressed it's bad yeah i mm-hmm. always thought that but Same it must be some like kind of delicate yeah. Well. yeah it is toxic to the human body though like the yeah, no. the hormones that are released 100%. during stress like it's toxic to humans and that's why a lot of the mass-produced meats like um you know our beef and stuff like that is intrinsically toxic because of the state that the animal's in before it's killed well, I'm, uh, like i yeah I, I eat meat have you mm-hmm. seen game changers yeah on netflix no. i haven't seen it yet yeah it's good another one another great one is what the health as well oh yeah you know that's a really really interesting one but yeah i've been i've been pescatarian pretty solidly now for two years you haven't seen sea spiracy have you no i haven't no oh, no don't. if you're a pescatarian don't watch it yeah, yeah i know you, you're going back vegan yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that much, oh right? my god do you watch it yeah, I've dude seen i like okay it's all fucking bad major I know, industry is just fucked but like okay the guys that produced it also did the controversial um cowspiracy cowspiracy right? like which that one was very iffy in the middle mm. but this one i was like fuck man like they have to do something about commercial fishing they, yeah. ha- they have to because at the rate that they're going if what they say is true it's there will be no fish in the sea by mm. 2048 yeah. Like I, and I, that is so scary to think about. I'm surprised. I'd be surprised if it doesn't happen earlier, man. Too. With the amount of oh, pollution as well, you know. Well, like they were saying that the trawlers, not mm-hmm. the not the commercial fishes, the trawlers, yeah, the like ones mega that trawlers, the big nets. Yeah. The nets stretch They're like 15 kilometers of net. Now. Yeah, but they stretch higher than um, skyscraper buildings. Underwater. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's and so but they so like it like everything. Like deforesting, they take the whole floor with them. (gasps) Yeah, everything. So the so the everything. So the bycatch, which is what is caught with the fish they're trying to everything that's unintended with inverted commas. It was some ridiculous. It was some stat. It was like if just for eight or so tuna, it was like like fifteen dolphins in bycatch. Yeah. Like, that, what that the whole fuck? thing is about overfishing and bycatch what the fuck is yeah. that yeah. and then they say like with the tuna cans and stuff they're like how do you certify that it's dolphin safe and they're like we can't mm-hmm. but it's still on the can it's still on the fucking can and they yeah. say they're like well don't you have like watches out mm-hmm. there that are like making sure that you know but 
They're out they the get thrown of the, overboard. Do they do? Yeah. The people go missing they go all, yeah. the fucking fucking all the time. And it's like, oh, he fell off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> what he you... drank too much. <laughs> Seriously, man. Like, And it's like, well, you can't say, well, no. Yeah. Because they're out in the middle of the fucking ocean. Yeah. There's no yeah. international yeah. waters. Dude. Yeah. No regulation. No. So it's, all fucked, eh? it's scary fucked because if it, <laughs> if it keeps going, it's gonna, we're going to. Yeah. And all our oxygen, or not all, but a lot of our oxygen Most comes from it. the ocean. All of it, you know, almost all of it. Yeah, yeah. pretty much all of it. Literally, hey. I thought, I, like, when I grew up in school, I'm like, save the trees. Yeah, you know, like we need trees. But then someone's like, hey man, no, actually, <laughs> save the coral. The ocean and the <laughs> coral is what is most yeah. of our oxygen. Yeah, and the plankton as well. As yeah. well, yeah, that's all. Seaweeds the... a massive yeah. one. They mm -hmm. all do it. Mm -hmm. It's all a big system. And I was like, that's mind blowing. Yeah. I never, I never mm. actually knew that. And yet the oceans are like a cesspool of all our toxins from land. R literally yeah. and it's, it's saddening yeah. very very sad yeah watch i do advise you to watch it yeah. but just have always take with i take everything with a grain of salt everything mm. i do like listen to mm -hmm. but you know watch but it is very compelling yeah they they, they, they make yeah. you think i'll for, take that on board sure on that. so overrated underrated culture kings mm. this is a good one i think It depends. He's on the fence, I think. Uh, it might be. It he might be it, sitting it on the fence. It depends on the time of year. Because True. Because they can release some, sh like, like what I'm wearing. Yeah. Some actual good quality shit. They and then some bangers. Then they release stuff. You're just like, oh, the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, I mean, Jess works at Culture King. Mm -hmm. So, she, like, when she, like, works there, she'll be like, hey, they're dropping this soon. Like, do you want yeah. it? And I'll be like, yes, but I'll be like, it looks sick. They just did like at Loida have been doing some cool stuff. It's a cool brand, yeah. Cool brand. They just did like a techno collab. I love techno yeah. music. With all their reflective stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, big on that. Cool yeah. shit, man. I was like, yeah, I want to see more of that. Mm -hmm. Do more of that. Mm. Not one thing that Culture Kings has done really, really smart. Now, shout out to Simon Beard because he's a TSS old boy. Mm. And um, one really, really smart business decision that they've made is they they if they don't necessarily start the brands in-house like loiter is owned by um partially owned by culture kings yeah. so is anti-order um that was actually bought by culture kings and now is an internal brand mm. Carre is a 100 percent internal brand even yeah, though Carre france you know, go, go made crew. in brisbane go goat crew. crew um a bunch of other little Piper? brands Pardon? is pyra pyra no uh, no no, oh, no they didn't buy pyra no uh, no, he bought. They bought Dead Studios, which is Sam Moore's, the owner of Pyro's uh, previous yeah, brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Sam Moore just moved to the Gold Coast. I've been speaking to him. Oh, cool. Get him on the podcast. Uh, yeah, come yeah. on the potty soon. He's really, really keen. Cool. Man. No, I um it, and it also like I used to love their stuff with Tommy Doom. You guys, are yes, mm, yeah. You know, tattoo, I, I fucking love that collab. Right? Yeah, that was he sick. he did that like all that fucking like Spitfire style yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the like the Rats Get Fat collab. With yes, me, yeah. Dude, I have yeah. so many of their Bro. fucking shirts, and I was like, I like that, like that, like they can do some really cool collabs, and like, but they have amazing pull. They can do whatever they want. Oh, do you, you but heard, they do what sells. You you heard about the the buyout from the states? Yes, they, so just sold? they only sold fifty or forty nine percent or something. Forty nine percent. But it was a fucking fat sum. Was it? Of what? Yeah, a couple what of hundred million. It wasn't? Oh, was it eight hundred mil? Yeah, something like that. I think. Uh, I, what I heard it was six hundred million US for forty nine percent. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Eight hundred million. It's gonna be all yeah. over the states. Or, but it's yeah, and that's the craziest part is they were saying that a lot of the orders they get are international as well. Yeah. Yeah. So if they have an outlet in the states. Mm -hmm. They're going to go out. Killing it. But what I'm sorry. excited for is because it's bought by a massive investment firm in California. Mm. Um, what I'm excited for, that means America is taking Australian ser Australian fashion like seriously. Yeah. So that means more big American brands are going to come here and it opens up the channel for big Australian brands to go over there. That's exactly, you know, that's very Not just true. clothing yeah. too, like everything that's tied in with clothing. Yeah. Music, Music. Yeah. All the yeah. culture that fashion, goes along with it. Like you yeah. could like, that's the best thing about being creative. Mm -hmm. I feel like there is so many avenues you can go down um, and just explore that it's like endless. Like yeah. we, like I met Jess and I are both creatives. Yeah, I didn't like we're very creative, but she's a she does music, DJing. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist, but it's still a very creative thing. You know, it's yeah. a creative process. So like when you when I met, it's a way of thinking. Oh yeah, than anything, yeah, when you meet someone who is creative. <laughs> 
you just you think, like you can see them at when you see them at work it's mm -hmm. beautiful mm -hmm. you know yeah. like when i see jess dj she's just like you she's, see the gears taking oh, her like, she's in the, <laughs> like in the zone yeah like yeah. The, like at rabbits yeah she her set was at 4 30 in the morning what a gem Ooh. and everyone was like that is a graveyard shift and i was like yeah but we're at rabbits at rabbits that's like the <laughs> yeah. fucking headline seriously <laughs> and they yeah. had this the most um it was oh, what was it called drift lab she played in the drift lab and mm -hmm. it was in a like you have these hills and it goes down into this like little crest in the hill yep. and they had like the a most, mini amphitheater yeah, yeah and they had the most fucking amazing sound system you have it was the best sound system in the whole of rabbits the main stage could not compete with these wow and you would stand there and it was just like your hair was going back like yeah, that's how fuck fucking insane yeah. it was and wow. i was like oh my god because jess had to get up at four she's like i have to go to bed mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna get up for it i have to be in the zone i'm like she was so angry she's up there in her jammies fucking Dude, <laughs> it's fucking freezing out there yeah. in Kingham. Yeah, I bet. it was like zero degrees on friday so for a little bit of context for everyone listening um rabbits eat lettuce what is that so Rabbit's Eat Lettuce is a four-day uh, festival yep. um, held out in the hinterland or the bush. It's like a bush door. Hey. Basically a bush door. Yeah. yeah. And um, they've been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably the like the bigger one here on the coast. Yeah, most definitely. Um, but they did a collaboration with Bohemian Beat Freaks. So it was Rabbit and the Wolf. So yeah. um, the Bohemian Beat Freaks is like their sort of logo is like the wolf yep. thing. We also went to that, which is basically a smaller version of Rabbit's. Yeah. Way more intimate. Still fucking just as fun. It was awesome when we went. But um, Rabbits was the sort of combination of those two. Yeah. They killed it. Like, it was, like, it's hard to explain. Have you guys ever been to no, one? No, I haven't. No. 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 I just, haven't yet. just imagine four days with your best mates yeah. camping with no rules. In the middle of buttfuck nowhere. In the nowhere. middle of nowhere. With all these people with who are there for all the same these purpose. People with the same fun. taste in music. Yeah. Same interests. Both all just completely carefree. Just carefree. Yeah. And it's like no reception. You yeah. cannot check your phone because wow. there is no reception. That's awesome. That is incredible. I'm about that. So overrated, underrated, Gary V's NFT release. Oh, I haven't been following. Bro, I you're lucky, man. I I sort of stay away from Gary V. Yeah, like really? Yeah. Uh, so, so I'll rephrase it. Yeah. Underrated, overrated, Gary V. <laughs> Definitely over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. I feel like it's just sort of says the same thing mm -hmm. a lot, and it's like, like I used to like what he used to do when he first started. Yeah, like the inspiring stuff. But him. it hasn't changed much. It hasn't changed much. Yeah. I think yeah. he's dipped really into that like uh, brutal honesty. And then that's when it becomes very repetitive because Dude, like does, everybody man. has the same fucking problem. So he's saying the oh, same shit to every person who asks. You're like mm. that annoying fucking uncle that comes to the barbecue <laughs> and you're like, yeah, man, like we get it. Just fix it. No know. fucking excuses. Yeah. And he's like, Dude, yeah. you're, is your mother not doing He spreads like, a great message. He, do, look, don't he spreads me wrong. a great message. I love yeah. the stuff he talks about. Yeah. Taking risks. I took risks. Yeah. You know, I, you know, when we started Upshot, and the animation studio. Yeah. yeah. So Upshot Which is, we'll touch on in a second. Yeah, yeah. But when you take risks, you're willing to obviously sacrifice some portion of yourself or yeah. time or money um, or friendships. Yeah. And like he, the, the way that he says it is it's so true. When you're in your 20s, when you're young, you have no baggage. Yeah. None. Mm. When you're older, you do. You got the house. If you have a mortgage, mm -hmm. you got kids, mm -hmm. you got a wife or you have a husband. Mm -hmm. So you have this baggage and it's not easy to get up and go chase that thing that you've been thinking about for months because you've got other things tied to you. Yeah. When you're yeah. in your fucking twenties, you have no ties. No. None. Anyone you can make that, your decisions day by day. Dude, yeah. minute by minute. Yeah. Just like no one gives a fuck yeah. about you in your 20s. That's what's even scarier. Yeah. You'll find that no one gives a fuck. They're like, like, they're it's like, very oh, freeing when you realize so that. It's so freeing, yeah. man. Like yeah. everyone's like, oh, what are you doing? I'm doing this. Okay. Yeah. I really couldn't care, to be honest. I'm <laughs> this dealing is what with, I'm doing. I'm yeah. dealing with my shit. Yeah. So it's like, you know, like you, you have a, there is a lot of expectations, especially today on people growing up in social media there's mm -hmm. like i'm doing this i'm doing this yeah i'm investing in that i'm killing this i'm making this company everyone's mm -hmm. like oh 
I don't know if I, but I yeah. it gets to your head. No, right? the FOMO is real, man. Hundred yeah. percent. Social media is like the just FOMO, everybody's highlights. Yeah. Highlights, but you know, you don't see the downsides. No, no. one's gonna post. Yeah, I lost fifty thousand today <laughs> on, on Bitcoin. <laughs> like, no one wants to see that, but no. people do want to see that. They yeah, want to yeah. like. It's like the recent trend on TikTok of the women posting the unattractive versions of the photos that they were uploading. Yeah. I love that shit. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. They, well, they, yeah. you know, like people are posting their insecurities on TikTok. That's why there's lots of positive trends going on TikTok. You know? Yeah. It is. Like, it's been very interesting to see when TikTok first rose to power in 2020, mm. how much that has shaped humanity and culture oh. and trends, and the way people quickly. think. And how young that information no we're getting to the end of our first set that was so sick all right so we last one you can over underrated uh love death and robots dude so underrated so underrated <laughs> you, you underrated yeah, underrated yeah, dude i obviously because i'm an animator yeah. yeah right i have such a deep respect for cgi animators mm -hmm. it takes such a fucking long time to do what they do right yeah so like from my just what like because i can't watch things anymore in animation and be, just enjoy you it. just like, pick yeah. the things i up, just yeah. pick i'm like oh so they use that engine oh yeah. like <laughs> oh that's a nice one like i just yeah. i'd see my mind when i watch these stuff but beautiful like so beautifully done love death and robots is such a great insight especially for someone who doesn't do cgi animation yeah. to look at it and go that's fucking awesome it's, i can yeah. I can tell a story in 10 minutes. Yeah. And it's, it's like such a fucking wicked show and just mm. how they're like showcasing all these like insanely talented oh, yeah. companies and 100%. people. Some of them yeah. are solo too. Like some insane. of them are fucking solo. Oh yeah. Imagine doing that insane, by yourself. Dude. Too long. You wouldn't so, be able to sleep, man. I, I got to ask, what's your favorite yeah. one? Favorite episode of that? Which one? Season one or two? Is the, what's I your favorite episode? Season two. It literally just came out. Just came oh. out. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you Shit. have to watch it. That's oh, why I thought so, you asked. So yeah, so I didn't even know. <laughs> Seriously. Oh my God. It's a God. little, it's way shorter. Yeah. Okay. They, the last one was 18 videos. This is eight. Yeah. But okay. they are fucking quality. But quality, yeah. Shit. All right, all all right, so we in. need to head to a very quick interlude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to cut you guys off there. I'm, right. I'm loving this fucking chat. That was an awesome start to it. I can't believe it took us that long. Shit, but we had that plan for like the first like, like 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> that segment was the whole first half. Oh, well, <laughs> we're going on the fly. We'll catch you guys back in just a minute. Stay tuned. Woo! Shit. Thank you guys for waiting around. I don't know why I just hit myself on the head by then. But <laughs> <laughs> Might have been the uh, fireball. Yeah. It could have been the double the fireball. shot that you just gave us. Yeah, it's doing its work <laughs> anyway. So thank you guys for waiting around. We came back from the standard interlude here at Before the Money. And we're going to do something a little bit different. We have quite a crowd tuning in tonight. <laughs> so I want, you, I want you guys to be introduced to the crowd. Guys, take it away in the booth. Let me know who's Let's here go. watching. Hey guys, Cyrus here. I'm um, tuning in with some cool people I've I've recently met. I'm um, just keeping up the high energy here. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. Yeah, pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, bro. man. Thank Thanks you, for coming. Bro. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Baden. Hey, Baden. From the back, really hey. loving the energy. Such a great vibe. You know, show me your friends. I'll show you your future. This is what <laughs> hey. it's cool. like. I'll that. drink to Beautiful. that. Keep it up. The energy is great. The podcast, the facts. Let's get yeah. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. Thanks, Baden. Great brother. longboard. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Paige. I'm here with the mob and the allies. You. Um, <laughs> <laughs> loving the energy, loving the boost, feeling super inspired. Um, so listen to the rest of the podcast and let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Fuck yeah, baby. Let's go. Let's yes. fucking go. Now you were telling us in the brief interlude we had, you were telling us a really interesting story about rabbits eat lettuce. Yes. Now, we know that that is a bush doof in the middle of butt fuck nowhere, and you met a wizard. Please expand on that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so like, this guy explained like psilocybin, like sh yeah. mushrooms. The and, active like, compound the, of magic mushrooms. Of magic yeah. mushrooms, in the best description I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. And he said that they were an ancient alien civilization mm -hmm. that will come and speak to you when you're ready. And I was wow. like, yes, that makes so much fucking mm -hmm. sense. It, it makes it, perfect sense. It yeah. does. Yeah. Because if you ever have taken psilocybin mm -hmm. or mushrooms, right? Uh, the way that it works is, for those that haven't, 
is that when you take mushrooms and it enters your stomach, you are going to have an allergic reaction to the compounds of the mushrooms. Yeah. What's going to happen is the psilocybin is then going to go to your brain mm -hmm. and it's going to fire off the receptors in your brain and bridge gaps that you have never fucking seen before. Like it, yeah. like the, it's the like, surface area on your brain is like quadrupled and then some Yeah, is. when you're on psilocybin. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a messenger. Yeah. And like when he described it like that, it made a lot of sense because you start witnessing things, like witnessing things with your own fucking eyes. <laughs> you go through lifetimes, man. More than just your eyes. But you do. do yeah. You feel. Everything. You feel it. You start meeting the most crazy people. Yeah. No, no, and beings. Yeah. Things that you never thought you'd see in your lifetime. And when he <laughs> came to us, <laughs> he said this and then just vanished. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, a puff of smoke. And like a, and like a puff of, <laughs> he, he just fucking like a wizard puffed away. <laughs> To the next campsite i'm like i love that human i want yeah. him around <laughs> more. he's your guardian angel seriously and these were just the small amounts of people i met i remember mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all beautiful people and like when you go to a place like that you have no reception you cannot contact anyone mm -hmm. and you are only surrounded by the people you love yeah well wow. just imagine that like even you in, don't get that very often. You, well, yeah. Today you don't. Yeah. Like you, everyone is so connected. Like Woodstock all over again. Literally, yeah. like you're so connected here. People forget what it means to be human. Mm -hmm. They seriously do. Oh, I feel that hundred percent. And yeah. like yeah. when you tap out, when you actually tap out, you can't contact anyone. You have nothing but to rely on yourself and your friends. Mm -hmm. You, it just there's like a euphoria that comes out that it's so yeah. beautiful. That it, a release. Uh, yeah. it, it is. It's yeah. a serious release. Like when we went away for the four days, you know, I said to my business partner, Zach, I was like, look, I'm going away for four days. You won't be able to contact me. I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> and he was like, he's like, look, man, okay. You do what you got to do, do, brother. It. You go. So I wow. went and it, seriously, the, the best experience you'll ever have. Was that your first time at Rabbits? First time at Rabbits. Yeah. Yeah. So that was Rabbit and the Wolf, which was both the, obviously the yep. Bohemian Bee Freaks and Rabbits combined. But seriously, highly recommend it to anyone who's going. It's getting bigger every single year. It would be, yeah. Well, I'm definitely going next year. You have to I'm seriously down, go. The, because Jess played, we went a day earlier. So you go out to, like, it is four hours from here. Mm-hmm in the deep country you go out to like these long road 100 kilometer an hour roads dodgy yeah. one ways flat grassland with kangaroos and shit and you get to the rock bit and it's 40 kilometers of rock gravel road yeah. <laughs> to get out to, to like get yeah. out there shit. that's so if you, you better hope your, your tires are pumped and yeah you're gonna <laughs> Dude, i'm not gonna take the lambo then no people <laughs> people were rocking up in gets <laughs> like driving like little fucking gets on like was my first car ever was a gets oh, fucking dude, it's it. bitches though yeah <laughs> <laughs> it does gets bitches <laughs> oh my god yeah, seriously like wow man and we're gonna be checking out for sure man 100 percent. you've it sold out. it to us you've mm -hmm. sold man you need a fucking sponsorship with rabbits i'll tell yeah. you what <laughs> Hit him up, rabbits. Let's go. Yeah. Well, we got some You've great. Got... We got some great photos. I'll be honest. There was a lot of leather, a lot of latex. Yes, that we got yeah, that's yeah, another yeah, thing. Yeah, so yeah. I've seen on your story, um, quite frequently, you love you love a good latex outfit. <laughs> yes, I do. Please expand on that a little bit. You know. Well, you love the creative side to it. You know. I just like the way it looks. Yeah. It's ultimately the way it looks. Yeah. It's the. It's like the embodiment of. Um, silhouette it's form mm -hmm. like and i'm a I, as an artist like i'm a I'm you love very, shape i love yeah. shape yeah i did life drawing you know like yeah. i love the way things look as a silhouette so when i'm looking for things i'm looking in shape because you're i see a lot of your graphic design work and it's very minimal black and white you know yes. you love the raw shape yeah you know, so like, i love that you picked yeah. that up actually because mm -hmm. that's very much what i'm about it's yeah. high contrast bare yeah but it has to be good shapes mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. that's and uh, when i when i first started at uni that's the first thing they teach you yeah it's like the key to like just proportions like, proportions yeah. just like you go and look at the kings of this shit disney mm -hmm. yeah pixar dreamworks look at the shapes of their characters their letters and stuff they yeah. stay they're like imprints in very your brain, yeah. yeah and you're like well, how do they do it <laughs> they all there's science to this shit yeah. they have it packed down mind they, control motherfuckers. seriously yeah. and they know what they're doing and it's because of silhouettes it's shape it's yeah. form 
Well, that's a great segue. I'm glad you brought up Disney because you own an animation studio called Upshop. Yes. So please le- give the people a little bit of a, a brief of what that is. And then I want to dive into your personal experience building that business. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, um, I started Upshot just coming out of uni. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. And I had just done my degree in animation at the Griffith um, University in Brisbane. Yep. The Queensland College of Art. Yep. I uh, just finished my degree in animation and my business partner, Zach, who I've been best friends with for a very long time, we studied Bond, he did business and economics. We yep. thought, fuck it. Let's just That's a nice mix. Come put together. two and two yeah. together and create our own thing. Yep. So we created Upshop and we wanted, to, I've always wanted to own my own studio. Yeah. My own, you know, animation studio, running my own thing. Your own team. Yeah, yeah. always. And, uh, you know, and it's always been a big dream of mine and still is, yeah. you know, like we always building with Upshot, you mm-hmm. know, and basically, you know, from now, I think it's been about four years we've been running now. Wow. So, yeah. Most and, businesses don't make it that far, man. Well, it took a few. Yeah. I'll be honest. <laughs> it took a few. I'll be honest. And, um, you know, we started off um, doing charity uh, doing charity stuff. Um, and we also work with a lot of foundations, um, Alana and Madeline Foundation, Barnados, we've done jobs for the children, um, Breast Cancer Foundation, we're national like, corporate partners with. Wow. Um, because my mother was actually diagnosed with yeah. breast cancer. So we um, we started a, a business way back called Charge for Change and we yeah. sold iPhone chargers and accessories and 50% of the profits went to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Wow. Nice. So we did all that kind of stuff and sort of like, dangling and business oriented things to sort of spice out the area and what it was like um and then we started realizing there was a real market for animated videos explainer videos web app demos corporate yeah. you know everything and we really started to be taken seriously and it was like holy shit like we have an actual fucking comp like Found a business yeah, yeah. yeah. Going. wow and oh my god if you if i had shown you my first video that we started <laughs> doing compared to what i do now i would cringe into like a <laughs> thousand like burns it's myself. like anything man like <laughs> when you listen back to your first recordings oh. how does that make you feel bro <laughs> <laughs> like you you keep them there because they're milestones yeah right yeah. yeah they're learning stepping stones like i if i hadn't have done that i would not have been mm. where i am now mm-hmm. and there's gold in there too like 100%. you start because you had something thing mm-hmm. and then you hear it back at like the ground roots and you you recognize like what it was that kept you going because i like using my example music yeah i listen to some of my old raps and some of them are hard to listen to but there's sections of them that i was like holy shit that's a fucking a deep ass metaphor isn't it fun though that's right? written yeah. so well yeah yeah you know going back and looking at your old shit and mm-hmm. being like Oh, hang on. Mm. I actually had something going and I was, yeah. and you can, you can yeah. remember what you were thinking back then. Yeah. yeah. And what I find really like a, a spin out as well is like when I, I can remember back to my first design pieces and I'm like, I know exactly what I, what I want to create, but my skills cannot get me there right now. <laughs> oh my God. The amount of times I'm looking at the most amazing animated features yeah. and being like, I can do that. Yeah. But I can't right now. <laughs> I will soon. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, just, you just keep, it's perishable. Yeah. Any creative skill is perishable. I don't care who you are. Mm-hmm. Any creative skill. It has to continue moving cont- forward. You have yeah. to yeah. just do it. Just get up, write something down, draw something, make a start, say something, just do it. Yeah. And I, you will find yourself. That would make a great slogan, by the way. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a company that does that. Oh, I haven't heard of really? it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I should probably do that. Then. Probably <laughs> trademark that shit. But like, literally, and I find like there is definitely blackout periods. You know, where you have like a creative slump. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And I yeah. think a lot of people. It's hard to quantify. To be mm-hmm. honest, like you can't like when someone like I'm not a. I'm definitely a creative thinker. Like I couldn't code to save my life. Cause it's <laughs> no. very different. Yeah. It's very logically thinking. And yeah. it's like, this does this. If that, do that. Right. Creativity is almost a hindrance to your work in that space. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because I think very, and when someone says, you know, why can't you just think of that? It's yeah. like, you can't, creativity comes at you in like 
waves mm -hmm. yeah you know like waves and it's like and it's a compounding of outside input as well 100 yeah, yep. influence yep. influence influence you go and i draw all the inspiration i can mm -hmm. you know good artists still you know great artists you know yeah like they'll just they'll take inspiration from other works and create something new mm -hmm. and i think that's beautiful because yeah. like you're you've you know you're acknowledging that what they had once made was good and now it's your turn because mm -hmm. you want to, you know, add You've to that. your stripes. And yeah. You, and you heard it and it inspired you. You thought of something that relates more to yourself and that created something completely new. Like It does. And I that's get it. 100%. I mm -hmm. get it where I hear like a bar in a song. Yes. And that one bar gives me an idea for a whole song, mm. a whole original song that I can directly bring back to that one bar. Yeah, that 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 started that. Once moment. you get into that flow state as well, it's almost an out of body experience, really, mm -hmm. isn't it? It is. It's you hard know? to describe, and that's is. that's the biggest reason why I have trouble sleeping. Because as soon as you, it's almost dangerous to do work before bed. Because if you get into a flow state, man, you're up that's all it. night. You are, and you're like, holy fuck, it's two. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, what is that sun doing up already? Oh my god! <laughs> I literally had that last night, right? Yeah. So I've been uh, a lot through the last week. I've, I'm always writing music, but mm -hmm. through the last week, I was trying to make like a more fun song that was like very relevant to how I'm feeling right now. Yeah. And I was struggling to do it. And then I went to this gig last night back at Thirsty Chiefs, shout out Thirsty Chiefs, got the rock star treatment once more. On the way back, the whole song came to me. I've been trying to write <laughs> it for like two, wow. three weeks. Wow. On the way home, the whole song came to me. The point I was saying it into my fucking uh, <laughs> yes. voice to text because I was driving and I was like, "It's here, it's now." I need to get this down. <laughs> Isn't that so it's fucking happening. funny? And it comes at the most fucking strangest. Yeah, yeah. you're, you're like, no you're like now, yeah. like right now. Like, this is a bad time. I can't <laughs> write it down, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's so. <laughs> that's amazing. So internally and upshot, uh, I want you to talk us through kind of one of the most difficult maybe periods of time or maybe even just a mental hurdle that you had to get over when you're launching yeah. that business or I think I think what's important to actually realize is when you're like when you're like starting out like a yeah. startup like you like there is a lot of time that you need to actually obviously invest yeah so the there, come up stage is very long yeah yeah and like you have to be willing to accept that all the time that you're putting into it may actually never pay off yeah never but there's a small fucking chance <laughs> that it actually for does. the hungry ones hungry and yep. like we had a few times where we were like all right well we'll start something else yeah you know but fuck it we learned from that experience 100 percent. always a learning point right? mm -hmm. so with upshot we had you know when we first started we had a little cash cow company called ico explainer videos mm -hmm. and it was on the back run of the 2017 crypto boom oh yeah so which is basically a repeat what we're going through right now but literally on a, yeah on a larger scale yeah so we thought fuck it let's get on the bull run mm -hmm. let's try and do that but how can we add our services i know what we'll do is we'll explain through explainer videos the initial coin offerings that yep. were being brought to the public mm -hmm. through explainer videos can I just explain ask what you the crypto on, is yeah. yeah can i ask you just on a basis level yeah. cuz that's closer to where i'm at but it uh, initial coin offering is yeah, hundred percent. So, an an ICO initial coin offering is basically when a like a blockchain company first releases their coin token, yep. gives people uh like an IPO. Yeah, like same a, as the stock market. Same as the stock. Yeah, hundred percent. It's literally the same thing. Yeah, but it's on the blockchain. Yeah. So you have a public offering. You get this amount. Um, and this is how much it's worth. We're going on an exchange, blah, blah, blah. They're Which, the first, it's the first chance to buy into this, a new mm. crypto company. Exactly. Or, and they, yeah. they advertise, you know, what we're doing, yep. who the holders are. We have this much equity in this. You know, we're not selling this amount. It's like the Shark Tank pitch, essentially. Pretty like, much. This is what it is. But then we, <laughs> we thought, fuck, what a great idea. Why don't we come in and just explain the whole coin in a video to someone? You know, yeah. how, how fucking confusing yeah. are cryptos anyway? Yeah. But being able to explain to the general public, and then we thought as a risk, this is where the risk was, we would take the payment for the video in entirely your currency, mm -hmm. which is essentially zero. Yeah. It's not worth anything. In the beginning, it's nothing. Hey. It's nothing. Yeah. So we're taking the risk of just using all our fucking time just to mm -hmm. see if they would take off. Yeah. So 
from there, we were able to secure many, many jobs, cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. and crypto companies. And then on the long, alongside of that, we were then getting and gearing up shot, which was what we wanted to basically advertise to the general public of Australia, you know, Brisbane, Gold Coast. We wanted to actually animate, like, you know, explain the videos, web app demos and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And so the cash cow company of ICO explainer videos was basically preparing us for upshot and we had no idea. Yeah. So when crypto eventually crashed, where else did we have to go? Yeah. It was upshot. So yeah. then yeah. we pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed upshot mm -hmm. through Google ads, SEO. And there was times where so like we before had- Before you get started on that, I'm really sorry. Backtrack a little bit because you skipped over the, the major failure there. So what actually happened through ICO, like that company, what happened towards the end of it? Because you'll get you're getting a bunch of clients. You you yeah, know you yeah. guys were making waves. You got heaps of this these coins that were essentially worth nothing, but they had the possibility yeah. to blow up. So, so we we were obviously banking on the fact that they would blow up. You know we were technically whales yeah. <laughs> in some of these currencies, but these like it's a risk. These projects, you know, some of them the the owners and CEOs and stuff, they're all just you know people with big ideas yeah. eventually lost all their money went mm. bankrupt mm -hmm. and then stopped so mm -hmm. then what happens to our coins that we're holding they go to zero still yeah so we lose all the time and effort in that and make no return yeah so we were like holy fuck we have like we have to do something here and luckily mm. we had upshot yeah and so we're like all right the lesson is Stop taking cryptocurrencies as payment. <laughs> <laughs> and let's start taking fucking actual cash, right? Dollars, baby. Dollars. Do you, do you guys like, do you still dabble or are you yeah. just completely out of- We do. I just did a space. job. Well, I got paid Australian. Yeah. I just did a job for Joel Rhea, which is a famous Australian artist, surrealist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he just did um, an NFT drop on Maker's Place. Wow. Um, and he did, a, he did great. He yeah. did really well, but he wanted to, you know, dabble in NFTs, which is blowing up right now. Yeah. For everyone listening, NFTs are basically artwork that is supported mm. by, you know, the crypto market, by the blockchain, all that kind of stuff. It's a very complex kind of way of producing art so you can limit the amount that it's being... It's art on the internet, basically. It's basically yeah. giving digital artists... Yeah more credibility on the blockchain did you hear that um that charlie bit my finger just became became an nft i'm sure it did and got taken wow. off of everything so Why? you can't because now it's an nft like oh. it can't be everywhere if and you're also sell it as so an once NFT. it's once it's minted yeah so yeah. basically the ethereum yeah ethereum is the blockchain that it runs on and yeah. the ethereum fact checking system is what all of the fucking GPU prices through the roof now because mm -hmm. the actual way that they fact checked it th is through mathematical equations. Mm -hmm. And that's how Ethereum works. Mm -hmm. So in order to basically check that it's yours, it has to run and check against everything else on the blockchain. Which yeah. is why it's bad for the environment. Oh, yeah. Mm. One artwork is like something like... It's like six and a half ha standard European households to run for a whole year. Yes. To, for one NFT artwork. One NFT artwork. And that's yeah. one. Yeah. Not the other versions that it has. Yeah. yeah. And so, there can be multiple versions of a so single piece. That's yeah. the the very bad downside to Ethereum is the energy required. Yeah. So we yeah. So basically we were like so invested in the blockchain. We were like learn all this stuff about it and all of a sudden it crashed. Yeah. And no one gave a fuck about it. <laughs> no, and look where we are now. Everyone's like, ah, Dogecoin. Yeah. So like Literally, we're no. a species with amnesia. Oh my god! <laughs> Literally, if you had looked at Bitcoin last year, it was three grand. Yeah. What is it now? Legit. What are we on? Like yeah. the fifty-six? Yeah, yeah, it, like? yeah. It tanked like fifty percent of its value overnight yeah. yesterday. But it's part of that process back, though, already. Yeah. The next but it's day. back. But yeah. that's the market you're in. Yeah. And like, yeah. If very you, volatile. So yeah. volatile. And like, you, so we were like, we got to get away from this because we lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. Like. Uh, like I won't say how much, but we we did. multiple digits. We, yeah, yeah, we yeah. lost we lost <laughs> a lot dollars. of money just yeah. fucking around. And yeah, we took the risk, we lost. But you on the other side of that, you could have made multiple, multiple upon multiple of digits if everything went in your favor. That, that was the risk you took. That was the risk, that, yeah. and like we were like, you know, we're we're fucking whales in these companies that yeah. we have these coins in. If we just if they just take off. Even one of them. One yeah. of them. It's one of exactly. them. Then we're like, fuck, man. Just one. 
we would be cool but no and like that and like we've come to terms with that and yeah. like we're okay and you live and you learn I it's think, a learning experience but now look at your portfolio yeah you exactly you're exactly yeah. right and what we had what i didn't realize is that ico was the portfolio and experience that i needed to yeah. get an upshot to start well mm. you know so and like everything happens for a reason man. it does it yeah. fucking 100 percent does and now I, I look at my quality and upshot and what i can produce for companies here on the gold coast and stuff and what we can do mm -hmm. like fucking leagues better than what we were doing before yeah. yeah so it's it is a learning experience and it is definitely not a bad thing to make no. mistakes seriously like it's the best thing you can do really and, it, and it, like you don't feel like that at the time i feel no, like a, i felt like I a piece of not. shit <laughs> I, mean, I felt yeah. like, i was like i'm a loser <laughs> like i was Fucking like an idiot and then i'm looking at other people like getting rich off crypto and shit i'm like that would that could have been me yeah but it's not yeah. and like that's okay like you know and as long as you're still bulldog-ish on what you want Got to be relentless man. you gotta, be you, gotta yeah. be you gave us a ballpark of the number that you lost in that and from someone on the outside to like, you know, like that's, I couldn't even imagine having that amount of money to start with, mm. but to have been in the position to have lost that much and to be as cool as you still are, like, <laughs> you know, that, that, bro, that's character building beyond anything else, yeah. if only. You know? But yeah. we're still young, man. We can bounce back from anything multiple times over and still have a lifetime. Dude, hundred percent. I think that is also very important, mm -hmm. being able to bounce back and you have no baggage, so you can't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like Gary Vee. Like we said <laughs> in the beginning, man. But like you yeah. you don't. You have no back. You can you you can take risks. You can do it carefree. Mm -hmm. And what happens, you get a bit of scrape you know, you get scraped up, you know, you look like a loser. Yeah. So fuck it. Just do it. But you come you become rock solid. That's it. That's something that my, nothing can take away from you. One of my favorite quotes is harder ground makes for stronger roots. Ooh. So ah, and it I is like that. it's it's Put fucking that in a song, bro. It's fucking true. It does. It might just be <laughs> it it seriously does and like i um i've been read. i just i oh, i finished it last year it was my favorite books um it was called the happiness hypothesis oh it's one of my favorite books i've bought it i haven't read it yet by mark Hay. it is seriously yeah. dude read it okay i will one of my favorite lines in it um and it's so great and it's like oh, where'd it go it's man is but an animal suspended in webs of significance that he himself has spun and it's so fucking That's the human true. condition. Let's it let, is. Let yeah. that sink in for a fucking... It yeah. is. Can you repeat that for the people, please? Let that sink Man in. Man is but an animal suspended in webs of significance that he himself has spun. Bars. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> bars. It is, it is, it's so fucking true because in that book, it's a chapter about comparing humans to animals and the animalistic natures that we all have. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, that the only reason why everything matters to us is because we suspend it in this web of importance because mm -hmm. that's what it means to be alive. If you don't have importance or things that you take seriously for you, what do you stand for? Like, mm -hmm. and that's why so many people feel so strongly about things. Because yeah. They, take, they have to stand for something. I have to. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, yeah. you will fall for anything, man. Like you... Stand for something or fall for everything or anything. Anything. Wow. Seriously. Like, and that, Fuck. it, dude, read the book. Yeah. It'll okay. change your fucking. I've already convinced me. You don't have to tell me. It'll unsolve. <laughs> Seriously. It changed. It literally changed my life when I read it. And I'm reading a book right now. It's called Humans. Yeah. And how we fucked it all up. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking awesome. It's basically, um, it's about humans. Um, and it goes back in history about why we're so bad at fucking shit like why we're so good at fucking shit up and why we are at the end like we, we go out of our way to fuck shit well, up we we're just so yeah. good at it like, <laughs> and it's like there was like there's just so many ways we can do it and we fuck it up every time yeah. perfectly <laughs> and, like we're actual experts with precision like actual experts at it and we like you'd think we'd learn from it but we don't <laughs> it's dude it's species with amnesia man 100%. seriously shit. and what i find really fucked up is like like you're saying, we go out of our way to fuck it up. Like, say, for instance, like the mm. Library of Alexandria, right? We oh, my God. go it's out of our way to destroy everything that came to before us because it's like, no, we don't want to learn from that. We want to fuck it up our own way. Could you imagine if we still had that fucking right. library? Could you imagine the amount of knowledge that was burnt in that? 
You know how cringy it feels yeah, it hearing every time the story I, about that? Every mm. time it oh. comes up, it hurts me a little bit. Like, oh, we'd be so fucked. We'd be we'd so fucked. such a better place. <laughs> like, now let's dive into a conspiracy real quick before we have to jump to an yeah. interlude. So do you remember the Malaysian airline, whatever, that went missing? MH370. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll run like with that, that man. Yeah. I th- <laughs> so that sounds right. Yeah. That had 60 of the world's leading AIDS doctors on their way to a conference. That put Did the, it actually? That put the um, cure for AIDS back over 40 to 50 years, that plane disappearing. Oh, I did not know about that. Yeah, bro. That My, this is a deep. fucking can of worms. Yes. Now, talk about fucking humans fucking shit up, man. That is like prime example. And it happens every single day. Oh, like, like so that's that's a pretty fucking hill. Yeah. <laughs> and how have they never we found got that in plane. this plane? And that's a pretty fucking hill. You know what? I'm, Good dude. I'm not actually surprised. Yeah. I would not. The amount of fucking ludicrous shit oh. that the government <laughs> does on a daily fucking <laughs> any government mm. does that like the efforts they take to silence people, and they think no one notices. Have you seen that video that um there was like a is a German guy who lives mm-hmm. in his attic and he does a lot of like conspiracy videos and talks about um the elite and like what they're doing, pedophile rings and all mm-hmm. that. Literally fucking yesterday, his house got stormed by the German fucking SWAT. And he got taken under arrest. And they didn't give him a reason. Literally on stream. He's like, he's talking in German. He's like, they're at my door, blah, blah, blah. Um, wow! This is me, blah, blah blah. If I, if it's like fucking Assange, yeah, literally like Assange. He's like a German version of Assange, like, and it's they, they just took him away. I think that it's like yeah. fucking scary that like we're so naive. Yeah, uh, I just think that it's fucking scary. The thought of like the way that the the world's heading, like with crypto and shit. The power is returning to the people. And they hate it. They fucking hate it. I am scared for their, like, desperate last ditch effort. Uh, Like, what are they going to fucking do? They're going to get desperate, man. It'll be a military state. They're going to be like, hey, we're losing control. We need to get control. Well, they cannot. That's what happened in the States. They can't can't regulate crypto. And that, and uh, and that's why. That's let's fun. jump. Let's jump into an interlude real quick. Oh, we're getting hanged. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. All right. We'll see you guys in two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like this. This has been a really good fucking time. I was looking forward to. And Jack was like, for the longest time, has been trying to get me on this ever since yeah. Angus's birthday. Yeah. And I've been so fucking yeah. busy. And I every time I ask him, I'm like, bro, I can't. I can't. I'm like packed. Yeah, man. and literally he asked me last week, and he's like, "How's Friday look?" I'm like, "It's actually free." Yeah, fuck <laughs> it. Well, I'm glad you got we got you in, man. Like, Thank you. Yeah, no, I I fucking really enjoyed this. This is it, what I needed. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. I'm yeah. I'm glad that we can provide that for you too, because like it's it's a cool thing that we got going on here, and it's cool to bring new cool minds. Well, into I it and, I'd be happy to come back. I would. Hunt, well, that's what I was, was going to talk to you about this yeah. after, but like I'll fucking just say it here on the air. Like we definitely. We, cause you know, we're, we're talking about where we want to take this podcast yeah. and we definitely want to start diving into regular appearances. Yes. So, so we bring somebody back that we can, if it was more, if we brought them on more for like what they're doing, then we can check back in on what they're doing or uh, like for, yeah. for yourself as well. We would, yeah. for yeah. yourself, like we'd check back in on what you're doing with Upshot and stuff, yeah. but like you've just been a fucking awesome presence, awesome character and a lot of fun to have here. So like, you know, our, our audience are going to get around you. That's a guaranteed mm. Oh. So it's gonna it'd be an honor to have you back. You're definitely one of the people awesome. to stand out Thank to you. us I, as someone that I'm, we want to bring back. I feel honored. Like it's for the longest time I've been really looking for a conversation with like minded people. I feel like yeah. this is definitely what this is. Fuck yeah. Glad that's to provide, what we man. set out yeah. to do, man. And yeah, definitely like I said, you're Definitely one of the minds that we want to come want to come back because it's been, I, I like I've had the most fun yeah tonight it's been yeah. a fucking awesome time. it's been nothing but smiles that's how I like it yeah, yeah. man fuck it's, yeah I, and that, positive conversation that's what I oh mm-hmm. not necessarily positive but positive is great but mm-hmm. I also like as much as I like serious but like my philosophy has always been positive mm-hmm. like I like I have experienced a lot of negative stuff mm-hmm. and like a lot of very deep shit mm-hmm. um but what adds and 
makes you who you are is how you know obviously you respond to those situations and your mm. character development from that yeah yeah you know like i agree and like that's why i'm so positive is like you that's all you've got you got one because you've lived through the dark times dude yeah i have a ring that says carpe diem every single day yeah. i use the day seriously and, and like as probably dated as that is now mm -hmm. as cringy as it probably is i this is an heirloom that my family i have angus and my dad that have this yeah we wear, seen angus we wear this yeah. ring every day because i actually seriously mean that like yeah you actually have one life you do like it, it's and it goes i'm 24. you have to make your life Dude, your life doesn't come to you. i know <laughs> and it's like fuck, it's going so quick yeah like, it's, like shit man i'm gonna get married soon i'm gonna have, <laughs> like i'm gonna have babies and hey, i'm like Jessie, look out <laughs> <laughs> She knows, but <laughs> she, and like, you know, it, it, there's no room for fiddling around. Just be you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fuck what they think. Just do it. One of my favorite quotes ever. And like, I probably found this quote when I was like 14 years old and it is just stuck with me. Yeah. And it's Tyler Creator saying, do whatever the fuck you want to do, because at the end of the day, who's there? Yeah. Like when you're on your fucking deathbed, you're the only one that you. dies then. It's like, so fuck what everybody else expects of you, what they want you to do. Do what you want to do because at the end of the day, mm. who is there? 100%. It's you. You're there with yourself. And like, do you want to fucking be in that moment? Like, shit, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I didn't do this. So uh, the question that I kind of wanted to jump back into, just yeah. something that popped out at me because it's something that I resonate with. Um, and I was on... Am I on? Yeah, I think... I, I can hear. I it. can now, and they turned me up. Thank you, Scott, with one this T. Scotty, the man, man, the man with the plan behind the scenes. He makes this all come together. He makes a lot more <laughs> than just this come together. It he does. Yeah. He is the glue that holds this together. He's the glue <laughs> that holds my set together. Yeah. Without Scott, we'd be lost. He did. Say, <laughs> he did say that it's a fucking. It's a job. It's a. It to, would be. It uh, we've watched Scott work harder this week than he's worked in his whole life. <laughs> We're putting that. And he's wearing work. it, but wearing it well. Looks good on you. He's yeah. still got a did, smile did on his I, face. Did I, or did I not say earlier that hard, like, uh, fucking busy is a good look on Scott? You did. It, it does. I said that earlier today. It's a good look on him. Yeah. It's fucking, you know. Like, he's glowing. Okay, I'm, I'm getting <laughs> as much as his eyes are like hanging out of his head. He's glowing, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm getting the tingles. It in makes my me dress better for some reason. Hey, it does. Hey, well, you're you putting that work in. You got a reason, Scott. There we yeah, go. exactly. It's a purpose. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna jump into the question. Stuck out to me because it's close to my heart. But yeah, um, I was also on your Upshot website watching some of the animations that you got up there. Yeah, and. And the breast cancer one, the Breast Cancer Foundation, you touched on that that's close to your heart yeah, as well. Yeah. So the question that I had was, is that uh, an opportunity that you created or did, it, did that come to you? What uh, what started that particular link? Yeah, so we, so from Charge for Change, which was that um, charity company we started for charges, yeah. um, we had formed a relationship with the National Breast Cancer Foundation. And so... Unfortunately, being in the most competitive environment, which was iPhone accessories, yeah. mm. it didn't take off as much as we thought. We tried to get into, you know, service stations, stores and stuff, but it didn't take off as much as we hoped. So we thought, look, we'll sell our the rest of the stock that we have to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. For, we'll just give it to them for free. And then we'll say, as part of our arrangement we will donate our services to you as part of our donation yep. and they were like fantastic so once twice a year we give them awareness or you know annual review videos for them to use for f free free of charge wow. and yeah. that's part of our donation to the national breast Cancer foundation mm -hmm. um and like we still feel very strongly about that so yeah, that's, that's where great, that video yeah. came from yeah um and it is it's such a uh it's such a mass like i've had a lot of people die um yeah. from this stuff yeah um, and it's like and i'm sure many of us know at least someone that it's been affected by cancer course, yeah. in some form and 
that's why when we heard about this and we wanted to make a difference, we thought, fuck it. Um, I want to do something with this that means something to us. Yeah. That's why we did this. So um, a big part of it is the, obviously the partnership we have with them um, and that, you know, when they need it, they can come to us and ask. Mm -hmm. It was, it was really cool to see like when, or when I was looking into you and what and what you're doing, just to see that included because it is it's a big part of all of our lives. Like you said, mm. everybody's been touched by it at some point. So it's cool to see someone who's, you know, like young and has the whole world at their fingertips essentially in the opportunities that they're creating for themselves to have that part of them that brings it back to something so wholesome like that. It's really cool. It's very Thank fulfilling, you. really. Huh? Yeah, no. Well, no, it is. Really cool. I, like I mean, my, my, it, it runs in the family. Um, and my Nana, um, is in hospital right now. Um, she mm. is suffering from uh, bowel cancer and other cancers in her stomach. But recently, um, she has just been diagnosed with brain cancer. Wow. And, um, unfortunately f for something like that, that's pretty severe. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, um, I love you, Nana. And, um, you know, seeing her in hospital in Sydney was the toughest thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. um, seeing her, I mean, she's bright, she's up, but it's really tough mm -hmm. watching someone slip away. Well, Especially when you that... remember them in like their full glory. You oh, know? 100%. Yeah. And then like, I can't imagine what it's like for my mom. It's yeah. her mom. Mm. And I, I don't know what it'd be like when you know, my mum passes. You can imagine that. Yeah, well, you were fucked. You can't imagine you can't that. Imagine that. Yeah. And like, it's this, and like, I feel so bad, but I just, there needs, obviously people are aware of it. There needs to be more funding. There needs to be more research and this stuff happens all the fucking time. Which is, just adds to the testament and how amazing it is that someone in a position that you are with the resources that you have that, you know, it's close to your heart and you're putting it out. And that's, thank you. No, I, pre I seriously appreciate that. Like, um, and like we said, like, uh, it, it's very close to me. So I, mm -hmm. I, I, I feel very strongly about this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that, yeah. thank you for opening up about yeah, that. Thanks, um, now we, that's, that's a very beautiful way for us to transition into the closing segment yep. of, of this. So, um, I, I want a little bit of an insight into what kind of, what kind of advice you would give yourself like backtracking to the maybe the start of your journey and where wherever that is for you the start of your journey give us an insight into that what that is and what kind of advice based on your experience now you would give to yourself back then <laughs> <laughs> that's a great fucking question um yeah fuck you know when you can go back, you really wish you could go back <laughs> and be like, hey man, don't do that. <laughs> the thing is, I could go, if you theoretically could go back in time yeah. and tell yourself not We to will eventually be able to. <laughs> <laughs> but don't. Mm -hmm. How do you think you are where you are now? The butterfly effect, man. It could change it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you'll never, like, the, like, like I said in, my, in the book I'm reading, yeah. how bad we are making mistakes. <laughs> That's our are. best learning. How good we are at making mistakes. Literally, exactly, that yeah. is how we're so good at learning from that. Yeah. But we're also not. Like mm -hmm. there's just, there's two sides. But like in my position, growing up, I was all, I always knew that I wanted to do something related to the arts. Yeah. And like have, coming from a very arty family. Um, and I fully believe that it starts at home mm -hmm. and it starts with good parents. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Free thinking parents. Well, hundred yep. percent. And like you, like if you're blessed enough to have parents, to have those people in your life, and have parents that are there to nurture you, support you to whatever you want to do, you you're doing a lot better than mm -hmm. most. Yeah. And you shouldn't take that for granted. And with my situation, I had the most beautiful two people despite the arguments that they had and the differences that they had, mm -hmm. were able to put a blanket over it and separate that from me so that I could grow up and be able to choose. Yeah. No politics, no fucking agendas. They let me choose what I wanted to be and I will do the exact same thing for my kids. 
mm-hmm. because that's what it means for me to live, to mm-hmm. be able to choose, yeah. to be able to take a side, to be able to be like, I love this. I want to pursue that. Why can't I pursue that? Oh, my yeah. parents won't let me. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I know way yeah. too many people that are like they got the wool pulled over their eyes they think that they're doing what they want to do but you and you see straight through it you can see that that is exactly what they were conditioned to want to do and it's sad it is really Mm. sad and like you try and you talk to them and say like hey man hey look you you can do this but it it, all i'm all i want to say is like if you have the opportunity and you have a good nurturing environment that is the basis for everything so when i left school i knew what i wanted to do before i left school mm-hmm. that's a blessing in itself yeah 100 percent. yeah a lot of us a lot of people don't. a lot of people don't yeah my brothers like um uh, connor um he like he was very conflicted for a long time yeah didn't know what he wanted to do you know he came to me talked to me he's like hey man like i want to do this i want to do that I was like, what like what do you actually want to do, man? What gets you excited? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And he's like, I don't know. Yeah. And like that's such a conflicted state of mind, right? But for me, I'm very blessed that I knew what I wanted to do before I did it. And mm. like for those of you who know that, don't let that go. Yeah. Stay with that. Yeah. Like that is the like seriously the biggest blessing you can ever have. When you like when someone tells you don't do that and you're like, <laughs> fuck off <laughs> that's what i want to do stay with that yeah run seriously. full speed no seriously yeah. man like and like i said like that's what was my story it was more like yeah i was working two jobs in brisbane mm-hmm. doing something that I, I you know i didn't really want to fucking stack shelves yeah but on the other side i was trying to start up a company you were doing mm, that with the vision of the end goal yeah yeah I, I guess was like, that there has to be, I was like, there's got, that's, it has to work. Mm. So what I'm hearing you say is you wouldn't change a thing. No. Okay. Never I like that. settle too is like, you know, like you, you had a purpose to do that mundane job. Mm-hmm. And I love, look, I love the people there. And like, mm. you know, you meet amazing people wherever you go. Yeah. But like, you, it, you have to be open to meeting amazing people and you can find them everywhere. But it's only through the mundane that you find. Yeah. yeah the extra like the extraordinary like you like you'd be so surprised that mm-hmm. in the most dull places that the most magnificent shit happens yeah driving in your fucking car on the way back you're like <laughs> oh my god all by yourself it gets yeah. it and you're yeah. like why now yeah and it just fucking happens and you're like okay and you and you took that you didn't mm-hmm. ignore it that is the difference between actually fucking want to pursue something and then be like oh it's just a hobby mm. yeah. whatever that, but that also comes from uh time in the game doing that because in that moment i i'd been there before i realized yeah. that these these waves come and i like i have to use that wave when it's coming because i realize what it is whereas somebody who maybe is like conformed to a mundane job they have that wave but they let that wave pass. And I'm yeah. I'm sure as hell there's plenty of people like A that. lot of people yeah. who have that wave of immense creativity. Like for for whatever amount of time it is, you see it so clear what you'd been trying to see. You need to fucking just get that shit down in whichever way you do it, whether it's a voice recording mm. or you write it down on paper. Me, myself, I'm a pen to paper person. Mm-hmm. I need to get that shit down because that's when you can build from that. That moment might only last there, but if you can utilize that moment, then you can come back to that moment. I Step back into those shoes, yeah. After the fact, every time that I write or perform that song, I will be in that moment mm. that I was driving back and it was all coming to me. Yes. Because I utilized that moment. I realized what that moment was and I completely opened myself up to what was coming to me in that moment and I just lived in it like that. The drive there was an hour and a half. The drive back was 20 fucking minutes. <laughs> because yeah. I was just fucking there, dude. Yeah. I was fucking in that spot where I was like, it, the all the, everything that I've been searching for the last two, three weeks is happening to me right now. Got that shit down. And I'll tell you what, that's going to be the fucking next banger. That's going to be the next track that everyone's like, oh, did you hear that last V Black drop? 
that was the yeah. shit Bro. that shit happened in that moment you heard that right here right now how that shit you heard that happened. first yeah. on before yeah. the money you that's how yep. that shit comes out those moments that you're like oh my god i'm on it right now you need to write it right now because if you don't write it right now you're not going to remember it no. later you need to get on that shit while it's happening the Fuck exact yeah, same yeah. happens you know when i'm designing a clothing piece it's like it all comes to me in full force if i don't sketch it in the moment that never comes to me again you know mm. and you can build upon it exactly like you were saying man the creative spaces doesn't matter what medium you operate in they're all the exact same mm. it's the same kind of energies that come flowing out of your brain and you yeah. need to jump on it because if you don't in that moment you might be able to come back to something similar but it's never got it the will same not energy be the same thing and you yeah. will always know that i have songs that i came back to later i didn't jump on it when it was happening and i came back to it and it's very similar it's half to what energy. it was yeah but it is not, not what it was. No, hundred yeah. percent. Mm. And like, you know, you've got like this. That train. It's all. It's called a train of thought for a yeah. reason. Yeah, you know, you it's fuck, a fucking bullet it's train. A fucking it's a train. bullet <laughs> train. You know, and you're like, I'm not getting off. No, I'm <laughs> this is express, <laughs> brother. Yeah, and you're like, I don't care what anyone says. Like, I need to get this down. Mm -hmm. I need to, do and you have to do it. Like, if you take it as seriously as you say you do, yeah, you need to get it down. And like, that's why I, that's why I love what I do. Yeah. You know, like at the end of the day, pe like, people will always find a reason to justify what they're doing. You always will. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, there will be some form of you that will justify it. But are you 100% happy with that justification? You know, like mm. you know, if you're, if yeah. you're like, in a shit job, yeah, your brain's gonna be like, it's good, don't change. Cause your brain hates change. Yeah. 100% hates change. So, like, you're in, a, you're in a stable job, you're making an okay income, don't change. Like, don't pursue that. What's, don't take that risk, cause that means change. Yeah. Which means that's you, more work. More work, which yeah. means you could lose money. Yeah. Which means you could be seen as this by your friends. Yeah. There's so many factors in it, right? Yeah. And like, that's why I have a deep appreciation for people who do take the risk, who do take the bold step, the first step, and just trying something new. Because the way that we look at it, it's not taking risks or working. Like, I have lots of people that tell me, oh, you know, why do you work so hard? You got to remember to live. And like, I'm like, I kind of laugh to myself inside. Dude, I'm like, yes. bro, what is living if it's not doing what I want to do every day? Oh, uh, fucking mm -hmm. work. You know? Fucking like, work. I, I hate yeah. the word work because it's like, the camera's just died. That's okay. Let's keep, continue this rolling. And we move this camera onto you potentially. So yeah, that's the a rap, good idea. Got, uh, we got a visual of you. Make sure you check into YouTube, man. Type big. in Anarchy TV. You'll find all the Before the Money episodes coming to you live in full HD. You'll get to see all these spectacular faces for yourself. So let's move towards a, a wrap up. I want to open the floor up to Alistair here. He's got a couple of people he wants to send his appreciation out to. So Alistair, I really, really appreciate it. And I'm sure every single person here Really appreciate you spreading you. your knowledge, spreading your frame of mind, because I love hanging around people with your kind of mindset. Thank you. That, that fucking over the moon. That, it's it's, it's been a fucking good time. It's been a trip, <laughs> honestly. It has. It's been good. I, I, like I said, I really enjoy speaking with like-minded people. Um, it's the same wavelength. Um, and anyone that knows me knows I'm a big fan of waves, mm -hmm. wavelengths. Um, and you guys are definitely on that. So let's ride that wave, oh, baby. Yeah. Come on, Take that, baby. Let's go. But Before yeah, money, baby. look, um, I'd like to shout out, um, obviously Jesse, uh, my fucking lifelong partner, will be my lifelong partner. Um, she's a fantastic DJ. Mm -hmm. Um, her handle is just Jesse. Um, go check her out. Instagram, SoundCloud, Facebook. Um, if you haven't seen her play live, you're fucking missing out. I'm a hundred percent serious. She's Get on that shit. She's an actual killer. Also, a good friend of mine, Blair, um, he runs his own uh, band. Yeah. We Miss Lucy. Um, he's actually a fucking cool guy. Go check his out. Go check his stuff out. Um, Do you know his handle? We Miss Lucy. We Miss Lucy. Yeah, okay. he's very yep. like Mac DeMarco esque. Yep. Is, very, it, that, is it just um, Miss Lucy? Is that Blair? Yeah, it's Blair. Yeah, it's just Miss Lucy. Well, I think it's We Miss Lucy. Now it's new. Oh, it's new. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you knew Blair. What the heck? I've been known Blair for fucking years. All right.
right. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah a he plays Killer Synth. Word I heard before yeah. the money, Dude, baby. his synth is fucking epic. Yeah, bad, man. <laughs> I, th- I had a feeling he wanted. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, so go go check Blair shit out. He's a fucking legend. Anyway, if you want to check out Upshot stuff, we have an Instagram. It's Upshot Studios. We have a website. It's upshotstudios.com.au. Um, we do anything under the moon. Um, if you have anything animation related, anything you want to get across, come very to Very talented team. Thank you. Yeah. Um, very small team, um, but we do take our time with your stuff. We'll make sure you get something good. So, Fuck no. Thank you Fuck guys yeah. for having me. And um, I, fucking, for I look forward on. to <laughs> seeing you the next one. Uh, thank you for jumping on. Thank man. you guys so much for tuning in to Before the Money. This has been a long episode, but as you guys know, it has been an episode with no dull moments. This has been high oh, energy, and I really wish yes. all you guys could have been here in the breaks because they were just as fun as sitting here on the couch. Oh, we, <laughs> we really need to set up a mic. We have, out there. We have yes. to. Yes. We have that. That's there was the next so one. many. We'll sell it on OnlyFans. <laughs> That's the OnlyFans the right only there. Fans are before the money, you get the We got dirt. the OnlyFans subscription. Coming. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate it. Guys in the booth, can you please give a quick shout out again? Shout out. I want to hear your voices one more time. Oh, one sec. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> Yeehaw. Let's go, baby. Amazing. Sorry, Let's go. It. Before the money, baby. AnikiLabel.com. <laughs> Make sure you go check that out. Get your fucking stees on. We yeah. have a new drop Ooh. coming just weeks oh, away. Yes. Fucking hell, this drop coming is hot. We're about dude. to knock your fucking socks off. Hey, V.BLVQ, hit me up on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, mm. Amazon, Tidal. Whatever the fuck you listen to music on, wherever you're absorbed, your sound. V.BLVQ. And I want to give Instagram. some appreciation to your plug because not once did you plug yourself in that, man. That was all other people plugs, dude. That was that was a first for Before the Money. That I is a first. Say. Can you please plug yourself on that? I'm going <laughs> to not be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> Where can the people find you? You can find me if you're fucking bold enough. <laughs> Follow Alistair.K on Instagram or Alistair King on Facebook. How would they spell that? It's A L E I S T E R dot K. Okay. And find yourself some fucking latex. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, it's just, it's without the dot. It's okay. Alistair K. That's my Instagram handle. There's some cool shit on there. I was having a stalk yeah. before. There's some cool shit up there, Barry. Post some cool shit. Thank you. Oh, it's no, it's no filter. So yeah, yeah, yeah. just don't, like, yeah, just don't open your shit in public. Yeah. Without <laughs> <laughs> just. If if you're a faint heart, do not come knocking because no. you will be wiped the fuck out. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> we can't wait to get this one to you. Have an incredible Tuesday. Before this has been another money, awesome episode of Before the Money. We have so much more coming to you guys. We're just warming up here. So hang on to your fucking seatbelts. I hope you enjoyed it. Good night, guys. Let's fucking go. Let's, Let's go. go. Awesome. Oh, fucking A. What a fucking solid submission. Oh, God, yeah. Thank you, bro. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Likewise. Told you, man.